Hey there, Dango Stu here. In today's video, we're going to try and fire this uh, Evan Red up for the first time, so... Apologies for the weekend not getting a video out. I uh, had a crazy busy week and it was my wife's birthday on the weekend and, you know, life got in the way. A lot's happened to this motor since you last saw it in the video. Uh, the power had sort of back together back on the uh, engine. I did set a camera up when we were putting the power head back on the outboard. Uh, I did that with the owner of the boat actually, with Doran, and it all went reasonably smoothly. There's not a lot to say with that part of the process. Before I put this on, I just had the new gasket that goes underneath, had a bit of Hylomar on that, and a bit of the Permatex number two around the exhaust ports on that, so that was really only the finer point there. Putting all the carbs and everything back onto the outboard itself was pretty straightforward. It's really just bolting stuff on. I would love to have filmed it if it had been time, but you didn't miss anything too critical, and I'm sure down the track we'll revisit this motor or something very similar anyway. I do have a few bits and pieces I'm not very sure about. I've got the service manual for it, and I was expecting it to be a little bit more obvious. I know a lot of you guys are much more familiar with Evinrude's than I am, so you can tell me, <laughs> hopefully. Just here between the carburetors and the crankcase here, there's a tube down here, they, the manual refers to as the balance tube. It goes to behind each carburetor, but there's no indication where this other end goes, and there isn't an obvious matching set of barbs where it should go. So if anyone knows where that's supposed to go, that'd be great. On the top here, it talks about a, a vapor pump. There's two hoses coming out, one goes to a T-piece, which I've seen a photo showing it going into the airbox, so it just takes that vapour and reburns it. There's another one that comes from down here, lower down, and I'm not 100% sure where that goes. A few perspective options, but if you can tell me that for sure, that'd be great too. So there's one of these on both sides for both banks of carburetors, and then two hoses that come, well actually no, that one I know, this one coming from what I believe is a, a, a vapour pump. Obviously my big concern with this motor, well there's two big things. One is just whenever you build a motor, you know, you think you've done a good job. It's always a bit nerve wracking when you first turn it over. Is it going to run smoothly? Is it going to fire up? Not too worried about that, but just, you know, is everything right with the bearings, all that kind of stuff. No rings have got caught, you know, that's the, the thing that makes me a bit anxious about starting it up. The second thing is just making sure that any potential cause of the original problem is gone. A viewer commented during the week that when they rebuilt one of these, that they actually went up one jet size just to make it run a little bit richer because they felt that running lean was the problem and it wasn't the carbs were dirty, they just felt that it needed to go up one jet size. At the time when I was doing this motor, I kind of thought, well, clearly the factory's chosen the correct jet size. But having read that comment, and I'm sorry I can't remember your name, I see a lot of comments and I rubbish with names, I'm sorry. So the carburetors are clean, but they're the original jets. You know, obviously it's how it came in the factory, so I'm relatively comfortable with that. What I am going to do though is drain the VRO oil tank, just in case there was any sort of water or anything at the bottom of that. So we'll just put brand new oil and then we'll use the prime bulb to push all the old oil out of the oil line. So we'll just get clean oil all the way through. Then we'll also add oil to the fuel tank. So we're running premix as well as leaving the VRO active. I'm going to use this vacuum pump to draw the oil out of the reservoir. And then once we've got new oil in, I'll prime it a bit into a container as well, just to use the new oil to push all the old oil out from the line. These vacuum pumps are quite good. You just sort of prime them, give them a few pumps. Then they store a bit of vacuum and they'll keep sucking. So you don't have to pump the whole time. So we'll let that drain and then we'll put a whole lot of new oil in. Sounds a bit like going to the dentist. What I'm using here is a Valvoline two-stroke, which I particularly like because it's the only brand available. Surprisingly, some of that even went into the reservoir. Now I'm going to pop the oil line off from here. Just pop it into a jar. 
And then I'll go use the prime bulb and just put some fresh oil through the line. In a previous video, we cleaned out the VRO pump, so it's clean, but it's also empty. So I presume I have to kind of prime a bit of oil into that as well. I'd say that's pretty close to enough to guarantee we've got clean oil coming all the way through. I can't imagine the bulb and the length of hose holding any more than that. So the manual says here during the break-in period the fuel tank must have 50 to 1. So that's what I'm going to put in now. So the owner told me I think he put $70 in the tank which is maybe 40, 50 litres tops. Less probably actually. But we'll run with that. I'm going to use this little Yamaha container. I really like these. All you need to do is find your ratio. So 25 to 1, 50 to 100 1. So we're going to go 50 to 1. And for 10 litres you put 200 mils. So it makes a bit of a no-brainer. So for us, we're really looking to put a litre in because we think there's going to be about 50 litres in. So 50 to 1, 50 litres of fuel, 1 litre of oil. And that's 5, so that's 1 litre. Sorry, it's a bit dark here, but next thing I'm going to do is go to the fuel primer bowl and do the same thing I did with the oil, just push the new fuel with oil in it through the line until it's coming out the end. So same idea, this time just the fuel line into the jar. And the prime bowl's just here. I might actually have to prime quite a bit of this because there's a water separating fuel filter that I put in this boat before we first launch it. So that'll have quite a bit of pure unleaded in it. So we might do three or four jars worth, just to be on the safe side. That doesn't look very healthy at all, to be honest with you. I'm gonna let that settle for a while and we'll have a look what it really looks like. This boat's been sitting for a while and it's just been raining heaps lately. So I'd be curious if water has got into the fuel because I know that the owner thoroughly cleaned the fuel tank out before its first run. But that to me is looking a lot like water, a lot of water. While that settles, I'm going to go and have a look at the water separating fuel filter just while that settles, drain it. And then we'll just keep pumping here. These are the jars from the water separating fuel filter inside. This one obviously is just lots of really clear separated water. But what's interesting is I realise now the fuel tank isn't as um, low as I thought. It's actually in the sides of the boat. So there's actually one sort of below each gunnel. And if I left the tap open for the fuel filter, fuel actually just gravity feeds through, so you can let it keep running, which is kind of nice. This got full, so I threw this one under, which is now pretty much pure fuel. So I'm now going to go back to pumping through the primer bowl to make sure that there's only pure fuel in the whole fuel line. And then I'm starting to get comfortable that we are running with a reasonable quality of fuel. What I will do though is add a little container of fuel cure to it first. I'll show you that. So this stuff we use a bit. This is a worth product. I don't know if it's rebadged or whatever, but it's really designed for water problems and fuel. And if you read all the little sort of fine print, I'll put a link to it in the description. It's essentially designed to take those traces of water and make them combustible. It's a little bit like adding an alcohol, I presume, because alcohol is water and fuel or oil soluble. And so it helps you kind of move it through. So I'll put some of this in the tank as well, but I'll keep priming until we've got pure fuel, add some of this, then I think we could be pretty comfortable. Yeah, so you can still see more there. You can already just see, it takes a while to settle, but you can already see that little layer on the bottom and that'll only grow as it settles. So I'll tip this, keep going. I think that last little bit of water we had was the water in the fuel line because definitely letting it gravity feed the tank got all the water out from the fuel filter there. There was obviously a bit left in the primer bulb and about three metres of fuel line. But I think we're getting pretty close to good fuel. While that settles, I'm going to have a look in the manual for the procedure for priming the VRO pump because I know last time when I first saw this motor, all the carburetor bowls were just full of oil. So I want to find out how we prime it uh, without necessarily just starting to push pure oil into the carburetor bowls. Once again, I'm not so worried about the priming really because we're already putting premix in there. So if it takes a little while to pick up on this oil, then it's not the end of the earth. 
I do presume, however, that it needs to be primed to the point where it can pick up the oil and it's not just sitting there trying to pump air and can't do that. So I'll have a look through, find out what the priming procedure is, and then we'll do that for the oil. So here's what it says. It was actually directly above, I think, what I was looking at before. But um, it says to complete the priming, squeeze the bulb until oil is visible in the sight tube, A, A, which is here. So if you see here on the outside of the cowling, over here where the oil comes in, the tube just inside the cowling is actually clear. So the idea is you prime it until you can see oil there and you stop. It also says to use real hose clamps for all the oil lines, not cable ties or whatever. So I'm just putting a new hose clamp on this hose where it comes into the motor. In other news, this fuel's been sitting for quite a while now and hasn't separated into a water layer. So I'm gonna do one more, just because I'm paranoid, and then I think we'll call the fuel good. Hose clamps on. I can already see oil in this clear section after a single pump, which doesn't surprise me because we'd already primed to the end of the line. So that's good to leave now, I think. This next jar is looking really clean too. I'm gonna to add this fuel cure to the tank though, just to be safe. Actually, while I do that, let's go and have a look at the fuel cap in case there's a problem there. I'm not sure if this is supposed to have any sort of O-ring. Doesn't look like it should. I doubt any fuel really gets through the thread. There's no screws in here though. I'd say then that putting some Sikaflex under here and some new screws in here is a good start so that water can't get under. This fuel cure treats up to 100 litres. You can't really overdose it, so we'll pop that in. and then I'll seal this up tomorrow. Final jar's looking really good too, so I'm just gonna put a hose clamp on the fuel line now where it attaches to the outboard, and then I think we can consider the fuel and the oil good to go. I was hoping to fire this up tonight, but it's actually really hard to move this without a car here, and I don't have a car with a tow ball. I'm not so worried about not starting it tonight because I can't run it to the weekend anyway, and I know a lot of you guys know a lot more about Evernoods than I do. So, I'm really happy to sort of get this video out midweek and just wait and hear if you guys have got any ideas on the hoses, which I'm sure somebody will, and anything else you might have noticed. Anything else you want to say, go for it. Speak now, forever hold your peace, you know, because in a few days we will be firing this up and taking it for a run. So once again, sorry for, uh, you know, missing last weekend and the videos being a bit erratic. It's just been really busy at the moment, particularly all this rain and sunk boats, etc. as some of you who follow the Instagram account, the Dango Stew Instagram account will have seen. We are, however, trying to get someone new on at the workshop to sort of, you know, lighten the load a little bit, which means I'd be able to get back to videos a bit more. Uh, the hard part is to sort of try and find a way to ultimately make it financially sustainable, let's be honest, because it does take a lot of time. Um, but, you know, I've got a few ideas about that, which I'll share in a video sometime down the track. All right, well, take care. Thanks again. Uh, please comment and, uh, you know, make any suggestions you've got about this engine before we fire it up because a lot of effort's gone into it. I'd rather hear now any little thing we can do to make sure that it runs nicely and continues running nicely than find it afterwards, you know? So don't be shy. All right, guys, take care, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.